bypassed community of Gum Springs, 13 miles south of Washington. Time, the present. Gum Springs is next door to Mount Vernon. Down there by the Potomac is where George Washington raised tobacco, bred horses, and rode to hounds. The mansion house in the beginning had only eight rooms. 1,275,000 persons visited Mount Vernon last year. It's pretty safe to say not one of them visited Gum Springs, except by mistake. Washington made this map of Mount Vernon in 1793. It shows his four farms, including the old Muddy Hole Farm or Plantation, a swampy place which is the site of the Gum Springs community today. William Holland, who served as guard at George Washington's tomb for 61 years and who lives in Gum Springs, gave Jerry Sanders some of the history. Well, George Washington, he had any number of servants. And I may also state that my wife's great-grandfather, Wes Ford, was a gardener for General George Washington. And General Washington, he left provision in his will. At the death of Mrs. Washington, each and every one of his servants should receive the free paper. And he divided this plantation that we are now sitting on amongst his servants. So my wife's great-grandfather, he got a portion of this line. I see. His name was Wes Ford. One of Mr. Holland's neighbors is Bruce Saunders great-great-grandson of West Ford. Saunders spoke of another relationship. According to the stories that uh, I've heard from a grandmother and a mother, uh, my great-great-grandfather was supposed to have been George Washington's son by one of the slave women. His name was uh, West Ford. But he never was a slave, he was a free. And uh, his uh, children lived in Alexander. They never were slaves. But my grandmother was a slave. Through the years, the face of Gum Springs has been scarred by poverty. Negro workers denied housing in surrounding white communities built temporary shacks, many of them from fruit packing cases, and the temporary became permanent. Outhouses were common. As recently as two years ago, more than half of the housing in Gum Springs was either substandard or condemned. The springs from which Muddy Hole derived its new name bred swamps and the Anopheles mosquito. The malaria that infected the body was conquered, but the disease that was to affect the soul of the man and the stature of his pride grew and spread. Gum Springs today still has no sidewalk. The paths of Gum Springs are paved with dirt, not cement, and the drainage system depends on the thirst of the earth the battle against flooding goes on. 
A Gum Springs mother, Mrs. Louise Carter, appeared before the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. We are a black community, but we are proud. We are not begging for handouts. We are only asking that we get a tangible return for our taxes. We do not feel that it is safe for our children to walk on roads with potholes from 6 to 12 inches deep, but cars have to zigzag from one side to the other, often narrowly missing a child or an adult to prevent the possibility of badly damaging a car in a pothole. It is the sole responsibility of the state of Virginia to keep the roads in proper condition and provide good drainage along these roads. Gum Springs may have its problems in drainage without the state of Virginia adding to its woes. We know that the private roads in our community are not your immediate problem, but we do expect the state of Virginia to keep up the roads that are in the system. We, the mothers, feel that it is danger enough as it is without the state of Virginia adding to our problems. You may think that this is a bad attitude, but if you have ever faced a mother lion protecting her cubs, we mothers in Gum Springs have the same desire to protect our tots. The Reverend Rufus Atkins is the executive director of the Saunders B. Moon Action Association in Gum Springs. He challenged the supervisors to act. What must we do? What must the taxpayers do to suffer for their children? Going to Drew Smith School, walking up Fortson Road. If two cars pass each other on Fortson Road and a person walking along Fortson Road, he had to get off in the ditch. The drainage is very bad. Right there at the center, there's a big pond right now, right from the flood we just had. That's well and good. But if you say, well, okay, if you donate the rose and give it to us so we can put it in the state system, but should people be allowed, should people be made to give away their property and put something in the state system and when they are taxpayers? Do you have to give your property away? That's the question I raised before the board. Had the hearing accomplished anything? Jerry Grossman talked with Herbert Harris, the county supervisor representing Mount Vernon and Gum Springs. Mr. Harris, the Reverend Rufus Atkins spoke on the deplorable conditions in Gum Springs. Do you think any action will be taken? Indeed I do. Action is needed and action must come, come fast, because Gum Springs represents a real problem in development in Fairfax County and uh, in Mount Vernon District especially. I'm very much aware of this problem because I happen to be a neighbor of Gum Springs. I have many friends that live there and have worked with them over the years. In the past, we have made some fundamental improvements as far as drainage is concerned. I feel strongly that we've reached the point now where we must expedite the actions on the, the main improvements that will improve the area and will help the uh, way of life in Gum Spring. Not only as to roads and drainage, but as to recreation, as to housing, as to schools, as to uh, the special needs of, of an area, area like Gum Springs that has had a great deal of poverty. Gum Springs is beginning to have a new look, independent of official plans. The past five years have witnessed a rise in modern housing, and now the unpainted wood of small shacks contrasts with a bright red of comfortable brick homes, a vote of faith by Negro residents in the future of their community. A complex of 209 apartments housing over 800 people has been built. Bruce Saunders, co-owner of the Integrated Spring Garden Apartments, described the project. Why did you decide to invest your money in an apartment complex? Well, uh, we needed uh, housing in this area, and the uh, county uh, started to tighten it up on the housing codes, building codes and things. And they condemned a lot of properties, so uh, I decided to try to build something, have, you know, a place for the people to go. I see. I understand these apartments are integrated. Yes, they are. Does this pose any special problem? No, we haven't had any, any problems at all. Uh, the apartments are advertised as being for moderate and low-income families. Now, well, are these apartments 
in the running range of the average Gum Springs residents? Yes, I think they are. They uh, started uh, 88 dollars for one bedroom, and then you have uh, one bedroom and a den at 104, then you have a, a small two bedroom for 109, and you have uh, another two bedroom that's a little larger for 114, then you have a large two bedroom that's 123, and then you have a three bedroom that's uh, 135. Now this includes all utilities. Are there many of the Gum Springs residents who have moved out of their uh, original houses and moved into your apartments? Yes, we have quite a few. I don't know the exact number, but we have uh, quite a few. Another aspect of the community's housing problem was attacked by Waldron Adams, a minister turned businessman. Mr. Adams, I understand that one time you were in the ministry. What made you leave it? A challenge to do the thing that I had been preaching to people and to youth in, in the main that could be done uh, and needed to be done. And I didn't find somebody else who would do it, so I decided uh, that I would do it myself. And that is how I got into the trailer park into this business. Uh, we had a county law that outlawed trailers being parked on private property and there are a good number of our people who were living in these small trailers parked around on private lots and this law would have eliminated those people from having a home and I felt that uh, somebody should do it and nobody else did, so I undertook to do it myself with a very meager capital and uh, a very little previous knowledge. But by studying, inquiring, and the assistance of a very warm county government, uh, it came into being, and it provided homes for 30 families, which do have all of the modern facilities. They are completely modern in sanitary facilities, and we are in the process now of beautification. Gum Springs is getting a new park. Jerry Sander interviewed Thomas Brown, president of the Gum Springs Civic Association. Mr. Brown, the park that's being built behind us is going to be named for Dr. Martin Luther King. Who decided upon this? The idea was thought by Reverend Atkins. It was first mentioned by Reverend Atkins, the director of the uh, Sound of B. Moon Community Action Association uh, Poverty Program. I thought it was a good idea. And he called Mr. Harris, our supervisor, and asked him to take it before the Board of Supervisors, and it was done. The Board of Supervisors passed on it unanimously. Now, the exact title used, I don't know, whether it be Memorial Park or uh, Sound of, uh, Martin Luther King Community Park, I don't know, but it would be definitely named after Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King. Money for the park was provided by Fairfax County in the issuance of bonds. It is but one outgrowth of community action. In 1963, a similar group of civic leaders raised money and founded two badly needed organizations. One is the daycare center headed by Mrs. Eloise Smith. Mrs. Smith, where does the daycare center get its funds? The daycare center gets its funds from OEO, after UPO has approved our proposal. Your school is integrated, isn't it? There yet. How do the children get, get along? Beautifully. They do. Do you ever have any problems with the parents? None whatsoever. The parents we have are very cooperative. They are interested in the welfare and the well-being of their children. Mm -hmm. 
What kind of an education do the children get here? They get what I would say a well-rounded education because you can't take just one slice of the child, you have to take the whole child. So we're interested in the child from a physical point of view, from an emotional point of view, intellectual point of view, and an aesthetic point of view. The whole child is what we try to develop. Mm -hmm. Do you in any way give them some identity with gum springs? Yes, we do. We do this through our trips. We take trips around the community and point out the beauty among the ugliness, should I say. We even go to some of the children's homes from time to time. And there are many uh, landmarks that have a great deal of meaning for the children here in Gum Springs. What are some of these landmarks? Well, one of the landmarks is the little creek that's named after a particular man. Then we have the reservoir, who's named also after someone else from Gum Springs. Is there any way, uh, now these children, of course, are very young, uh, that you teach them such things as pride? This is one of the first things we teach the children. Self-identification, pride, respect for self, respect for others. The Community Action Center was established under the leadership of Saunders B. Moon, principal of the Drew Smith Elementary School. On Christmas Day, 1963, just one month after work began on the center, Mr. Moon died. Today, the Saunders B. Moon Community Action Center, directed by Reverend Adkins, is a vital part of the life of Gum Springs. What are your duties here at the center? Well, as the executive director, I am responsible for the uh, com component 75, which we consider as the conduct and administration grant, uh, organizing the community, uh, overseeing of the of the administration part of this program. We also have in the program a preschool, which is component 7-6, preschool daycare center. The preschool daycare center is composed of children of the area we are serving, uh, Gum Springs, Spring Banks, and the trailer coats along the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, in that we, on staff, we have a three teacher, one teacher director, four teachers aides, uh, we have present employed nine, four NYC enrollees, a cook and a cook aide. A short time ago, you invited Stokely Carmichael to speak to your youth council. Why did you do this? I, for two reasons. The teen council, uh, we must not forget that the teenagers uh, have a voice in our American society. The teen council want to hear it. So, okay, bring him in. Now, I say it's better to bring him now when the winter time is here and it's cold than the summertime when the tensions are high and everybody uh, uh, is at each other's throat. So that by the time the summertime roll around, uh, uh, the tensions would be level here in this community that they will let them know that although we want to hear everyone, we want to work. And I felt like it was a good idea to bring them even because the teenagers want to hear. Because that's the only way we're going to attack these problems. As long as you push a person aside and say, no, you can't hear him. If you tell me, uh, well, the same old thing. When parents tell you sex is bad, and then they tell you why it's bad. So if we're going to push to come out from the side and say he's bad, let him come out into the open. What did he say? Well, Stokely Carmichael is, is a great surprise to me because everybody says to me, he said, you know, Stokely Carmichael treats about violence. He did not. He came down and talked about Negro history. He said, we didn't know anything about Negro history. We, and it's true. They're not teaching Negro history in the high schools here, not only here in this county, but around us. Uh, the surrounding communities, uh, they know very little about the Negro. I know more about you than you do about me. The future of Gum Springs rests in the hands of its youth. They are the participants in a revolution, and these members of the Teen Council express their sense of purpose. If I had a blank check in my pocket, and you could have any amount of money that you wanted, first, how would you use it for yourself, and second, how would you use it for Gum Springs? Well, uh, actually, for myself, you know, I wouldn't benefit much from it, really, but I would like to see the community grow, you know, 
prosperously. I mean, we could use a, a lot of money to improve Gun Springs. I mean, as far as fair housing and drainage and sidewalks and so forth. And I think we really need this because it's a great problem, you know, like when it rains. I mean, you know, the drainage is bad, it's real bad. And so forth, you know, we've been after this, you know, for a certain amount of time, you know. And so far, we have one drainage ditch in Gun Springs. And that's not helping very much, you know, because water still stands in low, you know, low areas. And, you know, it takes up three or four days to dry it up, but you still have to walk in and after it rains, you know, which creates a, you know, tough problem, you know, clothes and so forth. And we would like, you know, to get drainage, you know, as soon as we can, because we really need it. Yeah, the same question? Same question. Well, first of all, for myself, I'd, I'd use it to further my education, mostly, because I do ever want to make myself something to make the people who have lived around me all my life think of me as someone who they'd be proud of to remember. And as far as it comes springs, how to, like Joe said, you know, fair housing or better housing in Gum Springs, and especially the drainage and for sidewalks and stuff like that, because I think it's so important for these things, you know, necessities for people to have, because it, it kind of gives the people pride, I mean, of Gum Springs to have it looking like a, uh, some community that they would be proud to say, well, I come from Gum Springs, that's my community, that's where I want to live. And it, it's very important to a person. Well, uh, I just like uh, Lewis and Joe, it'd be for the betterment of the community because, uh, you know, before everybody said Gum Springs, well, that's that's a dump down in other end of Virginia. Well, I'd like to make this place one of the more prosperous communities, sort of like one of the uh, neighboring white communities where everybody says, "Oh, you're from Waynewood, that's the country club of, of Fairfax County." Well, I want to make Gum Springs the best neighborhood in Fairfax County mostly benefiting the teens because it, it's the teens that, that's uh, moving this community along now and in the future I'm sure they'll do the same thing. Does Gum Springs have a reputation? Uh, there used to be a, a rep, uh, reputation that was bad, you know, like if you came from Gum Springs and you went out of town, you had a fight. But now it's got, you know, since the teen have take, teens have taken over and have gone their way, they have a reputation of being workers and pushers and get, getting what they want instead of uh, of waiting for somebody to give it to them. Um, well, I think, just like Joe and Raymond and Lewis said, um, I think that Gun Spring should be, in the future, it would be a regular place where, you, where the white people used to stay, you know. And I think that the people in Gun Spring will be glad of this. That's all. What do you think about the houses that were burned down? Uh, well, the houses were burned down. Well, it was, uh, it was, you know, just something to do. The kids didn't have anything to do at night, you know. They wanted to burn houses, you know. They were supposedly, you know, in the, uh, the thing of Martin Luther King, you know, but they were just doing this to kill time, you know, to burn houses. Burn, we burned a house there, yeah. They're not doing anything else. They're just doing the, the county a favor. Because the houses were condemned. And uh, the houses that were burned down, they were going to fall down anyway. Now, when the time comes for you to assume the, the responsibilities of adulthood, are you going to move out of Gum Springs? Well, that depends. I really couldn't tell you at the moment. You know, I had to wait till that time comes. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it's when I get married, if I get married, I'll probably still be living down here, you know, around the community. Because I like, really like Gum Springs, and I've lived here all my life. Why do you like Gum Springs? It's a nice community. They're, you know, they're togetherness. They're willing to work for each other. What's black power? In my interpretation of black power, it's the same that of uh, Floyd McKissick. Uh, I may not be uh, quoting correctly, but he said ex exactly what I feel. Black power is simply putting hands, power in the hands of black people. Not all the power, but their equal share of power. And in that way, which is mostly the only way, I mean, face it, money just about controls the world, actually. Now, I'm not asking for all the money, but I'm asking for the share that I work for, the share that I deserve. And I want my economic cut out of the world. And that's one of the ways that I think that I can uh, achieve equality. That's black power. Black power? Well, black power to me is uh, the power of a black person, a black man, to uh, be able to do the things that he wants without having to uh, depend upon the white person or any other person outside of his community to, uh, to come in and give him this and give him that. I, black power to me has been able to do the things that you need to do without a asking for help and just being, na uh, how would you say, uh, I think it would be 
mostly political power, because uh, without politics, there's no such thing as power. As I No. 